Hi there. In this video, um, we'll look at problem one, in which we're asked to examine the corresponding parts between two figures. And so the first thing we need to do is look at just a sequence of rigid motions that map one figure onto another. And let's take a look and see what's going on with this problem. Okay, the first thing we need to do is identify the rigid motions um, that take one figure onto another. So it says ABCD is mapped onto GHIJ by something. And so really what we're doing is we're asking what will map this figure onto there. And it looks like a reflection across line M will do the job. So I just have room to write a reflection. More precisely, it's a reflection across line M. Next, uh, quadrilateral LMNO, which is nowhere to be found. Must be a typo. Um, I believe they mean uh, GHIJ. So that quadrilateral is ma mapped onto QRST by something. And it looks as though we could map that figure onto the other one by a translation along the vector from H to R. And we'll just write a translation. Okay, so we have a reflection followed by a translation, and that's how we map this figure onto this one. And that completes the first component. The second component, part B, asks us to identify all of the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides in the figures. And I probably just have room to do one set, and that should illustrate what's going on. Okay, so let's take a look at angle A. Uh, point A, when we perform this reflection, uh, maps to point G. And this green side will map to here. This green side will map to here. And so evidently, um, angle A maps to angle G. So I'll write angle A corresponds to angle G. Uh, reflection preserves the angles, so angle A is actually congruent to angle G. And let's keep going. Uh, next, when we perform the translation, uh, point G maps to point Q, and so that angle maps to here. A translation also preserves the angles, so those angles are actually congruent as well. Okay, so there's an example of the corresponding angles between the three figures. Um, you could also map um, angle C onto angle H, onto angle R, etc., etc. Hopefully that's enough, though, to illustrate what's going on as far as angles. Let's now look at the sides of the figures. And maybe I'll just clean up my diagram to avoid any confusion here. Okay. And it looks as though... Uh, side AD, so A maps to G, D maps to J, so side AD maps to side GJ. So I'll write side AD maps to side GJ, and those are congruent because a reflection preserves distances. Um, now let's go ahead and do that last transformation. Point G maps to point Q. Uh, point J maps to point T, and so side GJ maps to side QT. And once again, the translation preserves distances also, so all three of these segments um, are congruent. Uh, we've done rigid motion, so all the angles stay congruent, all the sides stay congruent, and that would be the response to that particular part of the problem. Uh, we could do other sides as well, but that should give you enough of an idea. Okay, let's move on to part C, which says to write a congruence statement for the pre-image, which is ABCD. And I'll clean up my picture again for this. Okay, so we want to know how this figure uh, corresponds to the image, which is QRST. 
Okay, so we would like to know how the vertices of this figure match the vertices of this one. And since I'm sort of out of room at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and write that um, right over here. Okay, I'm setting up four boxes since there are four vertices. And I'll just choose the vertices in any order. Uh, we'll go from D to C to B to A. D, C, B, A. And that figure is congruent to that final image here. Since we performed rigid transformations, the figures are congruent. And let's go ahead and match up the vertices. And I'll clean up my picture to make this clear. OK. So starting with D, we want to know where that maps to. D maps to J maps to T. So T is the corresponding vertex. OK, next. Um, where does C map to? C maps to I maps to S. So C maps to S. Next. We have B matching. I matching S. Whoops, I think I did that wrong. Let me try this again. B maps to H, which maps to R. So this goes to vertex R. And lastly, let's follow A. A maps to G, which maps to Q. So A maps to Q. And now we have a congruent statement which shows how the quadrilaterals are related. Um, final summary. Quadrilateral DCBA is congruent to quadrilateral TSRQ since we performed a sequence of rigid motions to map one onto the other. I hope this video was helpful. See you next time.